This video is a look at Odafe Owe in his 2021 season. It's not going to be comprehensive, to be honest with you. This is going to be 10 plays against the pass. He's generally going to be used as a pass rusher in these situations. Um, I think his two, his rookie season has to be qualified as a success. I'm not sure why people want to allocate a first-round talent pick towards another edge rusher when we have a guy like Owe, um, along with Tyus Bowser. Presumably that Tyus Bowser is able to return to health. Um, as someone mentioned on Twitter the other day, Tyus Bowser, we have one of the most team-friendly uh, second contracts in the league for someone who plays at an all-pro level, and I do think that Tyus Bowser is an all-pro. Um, anyway, 33 tackles in 15 games, 23 solo tackles. I think five sacks, and and depending on who you use for stats or where you look, either 27 or 29 quarterback pressures and, and 15 quarterback hits. And I think those numbers have to be looked at through the lens of he was not allowed to edge rush um, consistently. There were games where he was not used as an edge rusher in past situations, and that's because Bowser played so well and because we had signed Justin Houston. I do not think we need a veteran guy like Houston this year. I think Owe and Bowser should be our guys, period. And then, you know, Dalen Hayes, Pernell McPhee, if he comes back, you know, whoever else is there can be the three, four, and five guy. And if we pick, if we get someone in the fourth round that's there that's an available athlete, wonderful. I do not think we should be allocating first, second, or third round picks toward the edge position. We have too many other needs, and we and we allocated a first round pick for uh, Odafe Owe last year, and he's proven to be able to play in the league. Three force fumbles. Two fumbles recovered, so the guy makes big plays. Let's look at 10 plays from Adafe Owe, and this is going to be – I'm going to basically categorize in these into three situations. So so where he's asked to kind of spy the quarterback, uh, where he's a five technique and rushing the passer. So like um, right now Bowser down here is a, is a five technique. He's a wide five, and he'd be rushing against this left tackle for the Chargers. And then it's situations where he's a three technique. He's lined up inside and he's stunting in some manner, which he did a lot of. And I think I think he could have had more than five sacks if he was allowed to edge uh, edge rush consistently. So let's look at this first one. He's going to be a spy against Justin Herbert. You can see he's kind of just hanging out here right now. Um, Herbert is delivering the football or trying to deliver the football, and he gets sacked by Justin Houston off the edge. Houston gets a great great angle to operate with. Nobody chips him. So here's Owe. And, and Houston is the edge rusher over here. Nobody chips him. Nobody bothers him. So he's going to be one-on-one -on -one with this right tackle. What I'm saying and advocating for for Odafe Owe is, is if he could have gotten more of these opportunities, we could be looking at seven, eight, nine sacks instead of just five. So in any case, Owe is not a primary rusher. He's designed to just spy the quarterback. And you can see he's not penetrated the line of scrimmage at all. Meanwhile, our other two edge rushers, uh, Bowser and Houston are attacking. They're allowed to attack. So my point is, and I'll make it a third time, Owe, I think, could have been given more opportunities to do this, and we could have seen a higher number of sacks. I trust that we can get double-digit sacks out of a guy with his athletic ability if he's given consistent opportunities. Okay, a somewhat similar situation, uh, Chiefs-specific, I guess, from the standpoint of us jamming um, Travis Kelsey up here with Owe. Now, he doesn't really get a huge piece of him. He just redirects him inside a little bit and then delays rush, essentially spies, just like the the last play I showed you, so as to prevent Mahomes from being, to get it, being able to get out of the pocket. Simultaneous to that, these guys are getting up field. So what they're doing is no, nobody's, taking, nobody's taking an inside rush that would allow Mahomes to escape while we're wasting a guy in the middle of the field. You know what I'm saying? It's all coordinated. It's all utilized together. So there, we should get edge rushes here and here to, to make it to where all Mahomes can do is step up. And then, and then the delayed rush or spy by Owe uh, would allow him to, to try. I know i got a lot of lines drawn, sorry. Would allow him to track down a quarterback or get a hit, we know, as Mahomes tries to step up and deliver the football somewhere in, in this area here, I believe. So I understand the concept, and I think it was a good concept against the Chiefs. From an O-way standpoint, you know, it did limit his opportunities somewhat. I had I had I I was off by about four or five yards there, but you understand the point. And you'll see it from the end zone angle. Off screen here to the right, Kelsey is here, lined up tight. Gets a little bit of a piece of him. Kelsey's still going to be kind of open now if he was to sit. But what they're doing is they're trying to, if Mahomes does have a two-way go, 
you know, a two-way go, meaning, you know, to this side here or this side here, then Odafe Owe is athletic enough, explosive enough, fast enough to be able to go get him. And this time, Gator Roll tackles him. Looked pretty, like, could have been pretty painful. And obviously a horrible decision by Mahomes to put that ball up in the air. And then a nice job, you know, by Tavon Young getting the interception. So he was used in those two ways. There were some games like the Broncos game where he was allowed to edge rush a little more. Here's going to be two edge rushes. Neither one of them is necessarily successful, but I'm going to use them to illustrate that when he was allowed to rush off the edge and given opportunities, he was at least able to demonstrate a plan. So here he is off the right-hand side, and I think he's going to end up in the B-gap here against this left tackle for the Broncos. And it's a loss. He's not he's not getting there, but the quarterback's getting rid of the ball quick. It's an incomplete pass, however. But he's, he's going in the B-gap. You know, there is some pressure right in Drew Locke's face as he's throwing the football. I mean, we've got three guys attacking. So, all right, next play, very next play. Away on the same side versus the same left tackle. This time gives him an edge rush. And again, the ball is gotten rid of quickly. This is the one that's intercepted by Averett over here, over here in the in the back left corner of the end zone. But that's not the point of this video. The point is two consecutive snaps going against this left tackle. And on the on the first one he went inside, second one he's able to go outside. So when he and, and I think Yannick Ngakwe talked about this a little bit when he left the Ravens, was being able to set up your rushes and be able to use a series or progression of moves against tackles is what edge rushers need, and I think it's Odafe Owe is no different. Uh, given consistent opportunities, you know, I fully think that you know he's going to generate a high level of play for us next year. All right, another way that he was used in pass rush situations, I would call this dime, was was lining up next to Bowser, and they did a lot of different stuff with this. I talked about it multiple times during the season. Sometimes, and you'll see one or two of these in the video, they would drop Bowser out, and Owe would rush. Sometimes Owe would rush through this through this B gap, and Bowser would edge rush, you know, off off the C gap, off the edge. So they were allowing Owe to operate essentially as a wide three, even though he's not in a five. <laughs> they were allowing him to rush the B gap, just giving him a better angle to attack with. In this case, they both rush, and again, they they stunt or spy Owe. Over the middle, I'm not sure why we're doing this with Drew Locke, to be honest with you. And I'm not sure why we're doing this. And, and Houston over here to the left is ending up in the B-gap. To me, the concept on this should be, you know, we're trying to attack the edges, funnel him inside, you know, to a, a, a superior athlete who can then go get him on a secondary rush. And, and Houston ends up in the B-gap for whatever reason. Maybe it was an overset by the right tackle. But in any case, great pursuit by Owe. Misses the tackle here and then is able to pick the quarterback up and dump him with a with a second effort. Completed pass, though. A great job by, by Locke and the receiver. All right, against the Raiders, somewhat similar play, except he's not lined up next to Bowser. He's gonna get you're gonna get this spin. He's trying to jam Darren Waller, is what he's trying to do from the end zone angle. You'll see he's lined up head up. He's trying to jam him. Waller steps out, so he just goes ahead and rushes. And and there was some talk about this spin move being kind of rigid, uh, not smooth. But look, he's he's being grabbed by the right tackle. And I actually like when he chops back with his left arm here, right here. You can see his left arm's up in the air. When he's spinning, yeah, it's not super smooth, but he's chopping down on the left tackle's arm to be able to clear the space for him to accelerate out and then go get the sack. First sack of the season, obviously, in week one. So every sack isn't every sack isn't pretty and, and, and settled. This is a, a, a chase down situation, but I'm trying to show you the spin and how he chops back with his inside arm on the spin. You know, it's, it's not super smooth, don't get me wrong, but it's a sack. They all count, and it's a win. Uh, same side as Bowser again. So that's Owe with his hand in the dirt. And then Bowser's outside of him standing up. Utilize that alignment a lot. Bowser drops out to help out on the X backside. And it's a huge sack by Owe off the edge. Speed rush, you know, crunching hit on Teddy Bridgewater. He had a couple of them that game. Knocks his helmet off. Explosiveness. 10 out of 10 for Odafe Owe. Speed, 10 out of 10. You know, there was talk about his get-off uh, compared to other guys in college. And then there was some examples in, in his rookie season where his get-off was not fantastic. Bowser's going to drop out. Owe's going to be one-on-one with this tackle. I mean, get-off looks pretty good to me. Look at the, look at the depth, 
how he is upfield, you know, versus our other guys. Now we've got a stunt going on over here with with Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen is trying to pick this right tackle and get Houston to run up underneath of it. So we're we're playing games a lot often, and everybody knows that. I think that's why you you see some of the and, and Houston's getting held. You see some of our edge rushers not getting a ton of sacks with the Ravens, and then they go somewhere else and they get a shit ton of them because they're just allowed to be who they are. All right, five technique. Now they got Jarvis Landry at quarterback and, and Baker Mayfield here. Mayfield is going to run like this, you know, fake bubble out here to, dr to draw a player, just hold him. Landry makes a really bad decision. Uh, what I like about this from a OA standpoint is he's here battling with the tackle and, and not winning so far. From here, you see what I think is great acceleration while he's getting hit three times. I think the tackle makes contact with him three times, three little punches from here on out, and OA just plays through it and, and shows a, a great burst, if you ask me. And track down. I mean, he's able to track people down from behind. That's Jarvis Landry, not a quarterback. And get a sack, force fumble, and um, I believe fumble recovered. Maybe that wasn't him on the recovery, actually. I thought it was initially. All right, here's Oway. You can see Mayfield and Landry are switching. They should regret this decision. Any case, battling with the left tackle here. Watch the explosiveness from here on out while he's still getting punched by the tackle. Hands on, pushing him off balance. Oway's able to track him down. He's like the predator, man. You can't get away from him. At least the guys who have the football trying to throw it, quarterbacks, Typical quarterbacks and non-typical quarterbacks like Jarvis Landry can't, can't get away from it. Three technique, you're going to get a, a, a rush here, the kind of the Ravens' patented rush. They're going to stunt uh, Justin Houston inside the B-gap. They're going to bring Calais Campbell, and he's going to essentially pick this guard, and Oway's going to try to run the loop all the way around. I think he gets held somewhere in this area here. But in any case, this was he was used on this a lot when he's lined up next to Bowser. So you see Bowser is getting chipped, but the idea is the idea is to hold this guard, make this guard do something with either Owe or with Campbell. And and the whole point is absent this guy being here, we're not talking about him right now, is trying to free up this edge rusher with the left tackle. That's the that's the point of this. Now in this case the Vikings have an idea that that could be coming, so what they've done is they've they've got the Y in here to chip Bowser and then take away, you know, pretty much all of our pressure. Except for Calais Campbell's big butt. Probably, always probably getting held somewhere around in this area here. Thought it should have been called live. Um, you know, maybe maybe not. But in any case, that's an overtime. That's a stunt. Almost done here. Pass rush as a five technique versus the Raiders. It's going to be an X stunt or tech stunt, whatever you want to call it, with a... Uh, McPhee, and, and, and Oway does get decked here by the running back. He does clear the path. He does get a clear path, I should say, to the quarterback. McPhee gets the sack. So what's going to happen is McPhee's going to run inside and try to pin. Um, sometimes he tries to pin the guard's arm, essentially hold the guard, and free Oway up to run You know, through the A-gap. McPhee, in this case, does not, does not pin the arm of the guard at all, but the guard goes with him. Owe gets decked by this running back. You can see he's high, gets decked by the running back. You know, not a good look for him, obviously. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think in the comments section of, of Owe's uh, uh, season, um, what the, the type of rush he was able to generate. He's got great closing speed. He's on the same side as um, – he's on the same side as Bowser here. Bowser's wider. Humphrey is in between them. Um, Humphrey's, you know, assigned man to this tight end, I think, um, 85. Closing speed, gets a quarterback hit here, lined up at three technique, just keeps playing football. Justin Houston's getting held like crazy on this play uh, by the left tackle. Oway's getting held by the right tackle eventually as he gets around the edge. Neither one of them's called that I'm aware of. And they both get to the quarterback. You know, whether they count as a quarterback hit or not, they make contact with the quarterback here. You'll see it a little better from the end zone angle. I think we got great potential in Owe. Unbelievable draft steal last year to be able to get Bateman and Owe in the first round. Two guys with huge potential. If the Ravens are able to pull off anything like that this year, getting two guys of that equivalent talent, along with other people who can contribute, Got to be, got to be looked at, you know, um, um, as a success. Back to the first play here. I do intend to look at 
him against the run and um, some late season stuff, specifically the last three games that he played in. Um, I, I, I did not see him getting as many opportunities late in the season. I'm not sure if he fell out of favor or, or what the situation was, but Odafe Owe, I thought, produced, made big plays. You know, he did make some splash plays. You know, obviously the forced fumble against the Chiefs, the um, <clears throat> quarterback hit against the Chiefs leading to the interception. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section of OA season, what you think our focus should be leading into the draft in terms of edge rusher. I think this is our guy, along with Bowser, if they're both, if, if Bowser's absolutely healthy. I think those are our guys. I don't think we need another guy of that caliber. We've got too many holes on this roster to be allocating, you know, top end draft uh, positioning for edge rusher when we just went first round there last year. Let me know what you guys think of this video in the comment section.